what's going on? Welcome to DMB Academy. My name is Stranger, and I'm going to be your guest host for today. And just want to thank DMB Academy for inviting me on their channel today for their 174 marathon. And in true marathon style, in the first 30 minutes, I'm going to be designing as many classic jungle bass sounds as I can. And then in the next 30 minutes, I'm going to be using all those sounds to create a track. So let's see how we do. I'm just going to start the timer and then we'll get right into it. So let's hit the timer. All right. Timer is off. I have serum here. First sound we're going to make is an 808 bass. I have a sine wave here. And I like having a visual representation of what I'm working on. So I have an oscilloscope here so just so we can see the sound. It's always helpful to have that visual cue. So uh, first and foremost, I'm hearing a bit of click on the sine wave. It's always nice to add a bit of an attack. So five milliseconds should do the trick. And then the first thing I want is to have a bit of an attack to the 808. So I'm going to apply envelope two to the overall pitch of the sound. So we're going to go into global, select master tune, and let's just bring it up to one octave, which is uh, 12. And then what we want to do is create a shape out of envelope two. So bring the sustain down. So now it goes high to low. And I just want it real quick. So like 15 mil milliseconds should work. So that's perfect. So you hear that attack now. Okay. So that's sounding good. However, I feel like the 808 needs a bit of movement. So one thing we could do is add a really slight pitch modulation, a slower pitch modulation. So like using LFO one and setting this to maybe one bar or something and setting it to envelope mode. So only plays once and uh, we select uh, LFO one. And again, we're going to modulate master tune, but this time we're only setting it by one semitone. So it's a very slight. So you should hear it slightly pitched down. It just makes it sound a little more kind of like an 808. And now you want to add a bit of shape to that 808. So we we'll want to adjust the amplitude envelope. So now as you look at the waveform, that looks much nicer as opposed to just a brick wall of sound. You want dynamics to your bass, right? You want to have character. Now you could do it like this, or you can make it bulgy. Actually, this is nice. It has a nice vibe to it. Now we can add some saturation so we can actually turn on the filter over here and just bring the cutoff all the way up because we're not actually using the uh, filter, but we're using the drive, right? Now that's getting really loud. So we're going to have to compensate by bringing the master down. So uh, we can bring this down by, I don't know, negative down to negative three. Oh, that doesn't work. So you have to. So that's sounding more like it. maybe make the decay a bit longer that's uh what's one bar at 170 uh, uh bpm i i forget i think it's 1.54 like that okay so that's our first sound we have an 808 so i'm going to save this i'm going to be calling this dmb academy 808 okay All right, uh, let's keep creating. So that's our first sound down. And we did that in roughly four minutes. So let's see how much more we could do. Okay, name that. I'll name this project. Uh, I'll just call it DNB 
174. Okay, so next sound we're gonna make, let's make a, a drop bass. So a drop bass is very similar to an 808. There's just a stronger uh, pitch bend. So instead of one semitone, maybe we can make this seven. And there tends not to be such a hard attack, so we can bring this down. Yeah, that's closer, right? Maybe make it slower, make that pitch modulation slower on LFO one, so bring it down to maybe two bars. Okay, so then maybe the amplitude envelope probably needs to be longer just to, so it reaches the end of that shape under LFO. Maybe a bit of, let's try less drive with this one. Okay, that's our next sound. So let's save that. We're gonna save this as drop bass. Um, let's make a variation of this one. Let's uh, really distort this one this time. So let's uh, call this drop bass, make another, add some distortion. So that's sounding like a metalhead's uh, bass now. You could also filter this, you can add a filter here. Wonder what an LFO would do. LFO is optional. I'll just uh, leave that as a macro instead. So I'll add the. Uh, what I'll do is I'll add a macro for the amount. Actually, that macro one should be. I think I did that wrong. Um, what I want to do is use auxiliary source. Okay, so now that macro enables the the LFO. And I'll call that uh, wobble. Okay, we'll save this as uh, drop base distorted. Okay, so that's three sounds down. It's only been eight minutes, not bad. Okay. Um, let's make an old school Reese next. So I'll just duplicate this just to make it easier. Reese, old school Reese. So bring up uh, Serum. We'll initialize the sound, start from scratch. I'm gonna use a sine wave. So Reese space, I'm gonna, there's a multitude of ways to do this, but I like doing it this way where you use two sine waves and then detune it a bit. Oh, I'm using the wrong uh, detune. It's been a while since I've used Serum. I've been using uh, Vital more. Well, make some sounds of Vital as well. Okay, so it's getting there. So with this kind of reason, you want to add uh, some 
shape to, or you want to manipulate the shape of the sign to give it some harmonics on top, you can bend it, right? Okay, bend usually works. See how it sounds more angrier? That sounds more like an old school Reese. Now I just want this to be negative 50. So we're detuning this. 50 semitones here, negative 50 here. Again, I'm getting that click. So make sure you go in there, envelope one, add an attack. Maybe it could uh, have some distortion. Just a little bit. All right, that's sounding sick. We'll save this. Academy uh, Old School Reefs. Okay. All right, that's another sound down, and uh, we still have 20 minutes. How many sounds can we make? Uh, so next sound we got, let's see what else I can make. I have a whole list of sounds here. We can do a new school Reese, okay? So let's duplicate this guy. New Reese. Once again, let's initialize. This time we're going to use a, a sawtooth. Increase the unison mode and multiply the voices. Now I'm going to go into the global. I don't want that stereo uh, spread of each voice. So I'm going to bring this width down to zero. Or maybe just up to 30. Let's add some distortion to this guy. Oh, this is really quiet. For some reason, it's... Let's, um, maybe add a bit of a phaser here. I'm going to add a slide, so add some portamento. getting a bit loud here so I'm gonna bring it down a bit that's very loud okay check, check. I think I like that. I'm just going to save it. Okay, what else do we got? Let's uh, make a warp base. Okay, so let's keep going. I wonder how we're going to use all these base sounds in one track. We'll see. Okay, warp base. We're going to use a square wave. And then filter that bad boy. Okay, and then bring envelope two to modulate the cutoff. And then we'll uh, increase the attack so the cutoff slides up. Increase.
increase the resonance for some juice. The drive to warm it up. So I want this to end after maybe like a, a bar. Well, I mean like a quarter note. So uh, maybe what we can do is we can introduce something like this and then bring this guy down. So I want the volume to end. But I don't want it to repeat. So we got to make this slow enough. So. It's got to catch this filter, so we got to make this short enough. Maybe half is not long enough, so let's try a half dotted. having a bit of that decay there it just there's um there's a story about the sound uh, the very first time i've heard a warp bass was the very first one of the very first uh bass sounds i ever downloaded like 25 years ago and that warp bass had that this exact shape right so i'm just recreating it with that little tail at the end you can even add a bit of a delay, right? And just make it bounce back once. Just make sure you use this EQ and take it all that bottom end. Let's warm up the sound. Let's add some distortion. That's closer. Let's add some EQing. Bring out some of those mids. That's closer. There's our warp base. Let's keep going. We got 12 more minutes. Okay, let's see what else we can make. Let's let's create the uh, quest base from Andy C. Shimon's quest. That's a fun one to make. So, again, it's just a sine wave detuned. So, bring in two sine waves. Uh, make this maybe, yeah, 50, negative. Maybe we'll play around with the numbers. So, the quest base has a bit bit of a pitch bend so we could either do it with an envelope or an lfo let's do it with an lfo just make sure it's in envelope mode and then assign a lfo one to again your global pitch bring it make this slower And I want that wobble faster. So you have to detune it more to make it faster. So let's bring this up to uh, 75 and negative 75. OK, 
Okay, so that's closer. Let's add some shape to the sound. Okay, I'm liking that. I think we need some drive with this sound. Interestingly, when you add drive, you lose the wobble. So let's try something else. Let's try distorting it. Then bring the mix down for a bit of the original signal. Pretty close again. We're getting a bit of the click. We're going to add five milliseconds to the attack of your amplitude envelope. Okay, let's save that. Hi, I'm Icicle, and welcome to my studio. I'm a drummer bass producer from Holland, if you didn't know. I used to live in England for a long time and together with Drummer Bass Academy I have made a course describing my entire process. It's an Ableton course over four hours long in which I go through drum design, drum uh, programming, sound design, bass lines, uh, composition and arrangement, some advanced sound design techniques as well and mastering. Included are the project files as well, samples, presets, everything so you can properly follow along with me and uh, get to the same result as myself. Uh, so I hope you enjoy. So we got the quest space. Okay, uh, I'm gonna do a uh, another one, which is the uh, pitch modulated square wave. So we call this uh, let's call it pitch LFO square. So this kind of bass was used a lot in uh, around 1995. Recently, I heard. Uh, I heard a uh, producer bring it back in a track. I forgot the name now. So we want basic shapes, bring the square in. So we want to add alpha one uh, to the, again, to your global master tune. And this time maybe bring it up higher, maybe seven. That's the sound you want, but we want a bit of shape to this. Maybe make it less. So now it has more of that V recordings kind of sound. And we can add maybe some glide to connecting notes. So we can turn on legato and then portamento, maybe 100. Make sure this is mono. We got that jump up feel. Basic sounds, but fun sounds. Let's save this. Pitch LFO square. Okay. All right, we got six more minutes to go. Let's see what else we can make. 
for good measure, let's uh, let's give you guys a foghorn. So, let's uh, foghorn this. Okay, again, we'll start from scratch. Bring in sine wave. We'll bring in another sine wave. The second sine wave sometimes it does not need to be audible, so we can bring the level all the way down. We're only using it to modulate um, oscillator A, so bring in FM modulation from B. So we're going to be modulating this with B and then increase this. Okay, so now it's. Now bring this up. Uh, you can bring it by octaves or or fifths. So fifths would be plus seven. So I have brought it up by one octave and one fifth. So that's one plus. So that's uh, one octave plus uh, seven semitones. And then we're going to be modulating to create some uh, movements. We're going to be modulating this FM amount. So with LFO1, bring it to envelope mode. And we're going to be uh, modulating this guy with LFO1. And just slow it down, maybe. Give it a bit of a shark fin shape, as some of you like to call it. Maybe a bit slower. Increase the grid size so we can move this around a little bit. Let's, uh, oh, oh, I keep forgetting what's the sh uh, shortcut for, uh, for, uh, snapping the, the grid. Oh, I am messing it up. Let's just. So we're going to be modulating the filter as well. So the trick of these foghorn sounds is you're modulating a bunch of different things with the same LFO. We're modulating the FM amount, the cutoff, and then we're also going to modulate the distortion. So bring this up again. So I just brought the octave. So with the foghorns, it's all about experimentation. So I noticed that it actually sounded better when I brought the octave up one more. So now it's two octaves up. We can add some reverb. I know what they say. Don't ever put reverb to a bass. But you can use a low cut, remove all the sub from the reverb. We got two more minutes left. Let's shape this a little more. Maybe you want some EQing to bring this guy out a little. Um, there you go. That sounds a lot nicer. Okay, let's save this. Okay. All right. We got two minutes. Let's see what else uh, we can create. Let's create a, uh, a noise base. So noise base, I'll just use a sign and add some noise. We'll just, uh, use one of these guys and then we'll send it to, uh, the filter, send a noise to the filter. So only enable N and then high pass this noise. Oh, 
Oh no, what happened with the uh, serum? Let me just close it and reopen it. There we are. Distort. Maybe add some shape to this. We got one more minute, so we're a race against time. Oh, that's sounding nasty. some different noises I think either bright noise or arp white sounded good Time is pretty much up, so I'm going to save this sound, and those are our sounds for our show today. So I'm going to call this noise bass, and uh, boom. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten basses made in 30 minutes. So that's pretty cool. So now we have a bunch of bass sounds that we can play with for, with our track. So... I'm going to group this all together under base, save it. Okay. And then I'm going to start the next 30 minutes, 30 minutes, and we're going to start a track. Uh, just give me one second here. All right. Uh, so let's, uh, let's punch in. So I'm going to do this real quick to save time. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, well, first start the timer. Okay, timer started. We have 30 minutes. And I'm going to use the uh, modular kick and snare from my rollers kit. If you're interested in the rollers kit, you can always uh, check out my online shop. Uh, but, uh, and uh, you can probably check it down in the link below. We'll leave some links where you can follow me. Uh, but I'm going to pull in the modular kick over here. And then modular snare. Okay, and maybe just for good measure, bring in the hi hat instrument as well as the jungle shaker. All right, and this will help us save some time so we can punch in. And then we can use the modular snare uh, parameters to shape our snare. So that's uh, let's make a really tight snare. Okay, that sounded good. Let's shape that kick a little. Okay, that sounded good. Let's add a hi-hat. Again, we can use the parameters to shape this hi-hat. Okay, that's got good. Let's add the shaker. And that sounded good. Let's... uh. 
Let's add some bass sounds. So what I'm going to do is um, we'll do some call and response. So we'll start with the warp bass. And first thing is we want to find a good key for our bass. So let's... This was not, this is the quest space, so I didn't name this correctly. And let's try. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that sounded good. Let's make this a two bar and let's create some call and response. So we got this bass and then maybe the quest bass comes after. So maybe move this guy here, the quest bass. Maybe play higher. And then maybe higher up here for the second note. All right, so we got a good sequence already. So let's develop this a little more. We want more basses. So maybe a pitch LFO bass that comes in uh, so making this, we'll make this a four bar sequence. Okay, so this one comes in the first two bars and then we want another one that comes, this guy over here. Now this note, we may want to join it so there's a slide. Now this is this note is not long enough so we can lengthen it maybe make it 2.4 seconds maybe instead so the second note is getting quieter because I'm using legato, which joins the note. So when the first note ends, it continues uh, on the envelope where the last note ended. So it continues that line. So because of that, the second note comes over here. So it's quieter. So let's turn off legato. Let's bring this into a sequence. So control shift and I just brings all the um, parts to a similar row. So now we can pull it into the arrangement view. So this is how I like to work. I, it's just this, I find it's the quickest for me to work this way, starting in the other view. Maybe this one, we need another bass on this section. So instead of, so we can see it all, I can do it like this and just remove these parts. So you can actually see what's happening. So you can see that there's a call and response happening here. And this one, maybe we bring in the old school Reese. Whoa. There's an overlapping note over here. So whenever you have overlapping notes, a good way to solve it is just turn on mono mode so that only one note can ever be played at, at a time. Okay, 
this is this is sounding sick it's got like this old school jungle vibe to it uh let's add an aim in underneath just for vibes because we are making jungle and you need aimins in your jungle well not always but if you want vibes a quick vibe upper is adding some aimins in uh, throw that mofo aimin in I, I had a good aimin in my strange uh, free sample pack All right, let's check it out over here this one okay let's slice it to a new midi track I'm going to use my ultimate slicing preset. Okay. We don't need those bits here. We'll just... Oh, that I get, gave me an idea. So let's sequence the aiming. Let's go jungle this time. So I'm just going to just for speed. I just quantized all the notes. Usually I keep it a bit more human, but we're, this is a marathon. So we're trying to get, I want the crash here going. Ch -ch. Now the second one, just for variation, instead of this one, do it like that. Maybe we can make this like a, a switch up. Now, this aiming is kind of quiet, so we got to bring it up. Um, now, I'm not sure what is mapped to the volume. Interestingly, the volume is mapped to a button here. Maybe it's... Oh, here. But what you can do is you can just bring in utility. Maybe we can make it switch up. So from two step to this aim and drop. So let's see what happens. We'll copy these notes. So now to make it a little different, maybe on this new school part, we'll change up some of the sounds. Maybe use the foghorn instead of the warp bass. Now the warp foghorn is kind of loud, so we're gonna bring it down. And we'll shape the sound a little for this track. Maybe bring down the cutoff. That's it. And even D says, I want to, so I want to make this like, uh, old meets new. So the first part is new. So we'll use newer sounds. That's not fitting. I know what. We'll use the noise base on 
this part. This uh, re-space doesn't fit this part, so it's, we'll figure something out. Maybe the drop bass. Let's uh, bring this guy up here. Yeah, except the octave has to be brought down. Uh, let's try getting that new reason. I think we have to shape the new reese a bit. I'm going to turn off this phaser first and foremost. And then add maybe a quad. Yeah. This bass could be played an octave lower. That's cool. Yeah, that, that has the vibe. Yeah, there we go. Change up the notes here on the this part like that. Now we need this block to be longer, so we're gonna bring this here, double this up, and double this guy up. We work in 16 bar blocks usually in Django drum and bass. Okay, it's getting there. We need some sounds to fill in the space. So I'm going to bring out an, yet another sound from my rollers kit. It's the ultimate uh, jungle bleep, which is over here. And we can just uh, pull in one of the MIDI notes. Yeah, that works. We need some reverb on this guy. So... There we go. We need some more sounds. This, uh, I got some more sounds from my roller kit that we can use. I got some vo pretty cool vocal samples uh, under the sounds section under effects. And we can just pull this guy here. 
Let's see what we can do. Uh, see what we have here. Bad boy is pretty cool. Pull bad boy in. Add this one in as well. These are all cool. And then these laser sounds are cool. We can pull these guys in as well. And then Hear Me Now is cool. And then a London thing. Yeah. And then just add a bunch of delay to this. Now we're talking, right? Now we're talking. Let's um, EQ this aim in a little bit. And with these drums, and we're going to smash it a little. These uh, single, the single hit drums from my rollers kit will just... Uh, Add glue compressor is a nice way to smash it so we can bring glue compressor. We need utility to balance it out and then just, just bring SM exoscope so you can see what's happening. And we have 10 minutes left to this marathon. Let's see how we do. Okay. So easy way to, to kind of, we're going to clip it. So we get just increase the makeup and just bring the output down to compensate. Bring this guy here, so you want to see it on this step. Sick. Okay. Now, is it clipping it here on this side? Interesting. It's not clipping it here because you're bringing it down. Interesting. I didn't know that. So maybe maybe there's a way around this. I'm trying to think on the spot right now. What can we do? Because we'll just bring a clipper, a straight up clipper. Uh, G clip is one I use a lot. Yep. And let's just bring that. Yeah, there we go. Without clipping. With clipping. It just gives you that crunchy drum and bass sound. Isn't this a tune or what? Anyone got a lighter? Light it up. So that's pretty much our tune. And we still have eight minutes. I mean, I, th I think we're doing good. Once again, all the presets I've designed today can be downloaded down in the link below. And thanks to Drum and Bass Academy for having me. Let's check this one more time.
Oh yeah, jungle and drum and bass. Raise up your lighter. Where's the jungle rave at? Take me there right now. So that's pretty much our tune, and I think that's all I wanted to show you guys today. Just wanted to do it straight marathon style and give you guys as much sounds as I could in the first 30 minutes, and then I showed you how I would apply these sounds in the jungle and drum and bass. Oh, <coughs> oh choking on myself. The drum and bass jungle context. So. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed doing this show with you guys today. Hope you guys picked up a thing here or there, and hopefully you guys have fun with the presets. Um, yeah, once again, want to thank Drum and Bass Academy and the entire family for inviting me on their channel to do this. And uh, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to their channel as well. Uh, I do weekly videos on my channel as well. I uh, go by Stranger. You can find all my links down in the description below. So I uh, hope you guys have fun. Enjoy uh, 174 day. Get creative and make some drum and bass. Big up.